As we said at the end of unit one, each unit is going to end with a look at using the concepts of the unit with multiple variables, with functions of multiple variables. And with derivatives, derivatives tell us the rate of change. Well, if we're in two dimension, we've got the rate of change in two direction, horizontally and vertically. And so we're interested in what is the rate of change in both directions. As we answer this question, what are partial derivatives? And it's important to note that partial derivatives are taking the derivatives of functions with several variables, where a function takes inputs in both x and y. It is different than the implicit differentiation we did in the previous video, because with implicit differentiation, we do not have a function. We've got some equation where one side is equal to the other side. In this case, we're going to have a function that has x's and y's, but it is one function, that the function equals stuff. So these partial derivatives, which we use when the function has several variables going on, tell us the rate of change in one direction. And we have a slightly different notation to tell us the partial derivative rather than the regular derivatives. And we use kind of a cursive delta df dx, meaning the partial of f with respect to x. Or sometimes you'll just see the f with the subscript of x, which represents the change in the x direction. In other words, if the y stays constant, how is the x changing in that x direction? And then similarly, if we want the other direction, we would say the change of the function with respect to y, or sometimes just the f with the subscript of y, representing the change in the y direction. And the idea is that we want the change in one direction, assuming the other direction remains constant. In other words, we're going to treat the other variable as a constant. We're going to treat it just like it was the number 7 or the number 12. So for example, if I've got a function in x and y that is equal to 6x squared plus 2y squared minus 2xy plus 25, we could calculate the partial derivative with respect to x, meaning anytime I see a y, I treat it like it's a number. We're just taking the derivative with respect to the x. So with 6x squared, we know its derivative is 12x. But with the 2y squared, y is a constant, which means we're just adding a number here. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So the second term goes away. The next term we have is negative 2xy. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. And because that y is a constant, it just comes along for the ride. Plus 25 is a constant all alone with no x's, so its derivative is 0. So now we have our partial derivative with respect to x is 12x minus 2y. Now that we know that, we might be interested in what the partial derivative is with respect to x at the point 2, negative 3. In other words, at 2, negative 3, how is the x changing? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? And how fast? Well, we just plug those values into our partial with respect to f, which is 12 times x, which is 2, minus 2 times y, which is negative 3. And we find out the partial with respect to x at 2, negative 3 is equal to 24 plus 6, or 30. Also, we could have found the partial with respect to y. Let's do that as well. 
with the, we do the partial with respect to y, we treat the other variable, the x, as a constant. So 6x squared is a constant. Its derivative is 0. Then we have 2y squared. Its derivative is 4y. Then we have negative 2xy. Remember, the negative 2x we're going to treat like a constant. It just comes along for the ride. And the derivative of y is just 1. Then the derivative of 25 is just 0. And so we have our partial derivative with respect to y being 4y minus 2x. Let's use our same point and find out what's happening in the y direction at the point 2 comma negative 3. Plugging into our partial with respect to y, we have 4 times y, which is negative 3, minus 2 times x, which is 2. So the partial with respect to y at 2 comma negative 3 is negative 12 minus 4, which is negative 16. And so if we put this together, we can make a conclusion about what this graph is doing at the point 2, negative 3. At the point 2, negative 3, the graph is increasing at a rate of 30 in the x direction, increasing because it's positive, and decreasing at a rate of 16 in the y direction, decreasing because it's negative. And so this really gives us a good idea of at 2, negative 3, if I move towards x, we're going uphill. If I move towards y, we're going downhill. And we can see the rate at which the, those hills are increasing or decreasing. That's what the partial derivative tells us. Let's find a couple more partial derivatives so we can practice and get used to this concept of treating the other variable as a constant. Let's try this example next. Let's do the function of x and y is equal to the natural log of 2 plus 4x cubed y to the fifth. Well, when we do the partial derivative with respect to x, we know the derivative of natural log is 1 over the stuff, 2 plus 4x cubed y to the fifth, times the derivative of the stuff. Well, the derivative of 2 is 0. And when we're taking the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared, and keep the constant of y to the fifth along for the ride. And that gives us the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Let's also do the partial with respect to y. Again, it's a natural log. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over the stuff, 2 plus 4x cubed y to the fifth, times the derivative of the stuff. The derivative with respect to y, so we're going to treat the x cubed as a constant, taking the derivative of y fifth, 4 times 5 is 20, y to the fourth. And we've got our partial derivative of f with respect to y. Let's try one more example before we move to the next concept. Let's do one with a quotient rule. f of xy is equal to 6x squared minus 6y squared over x squared plus y squared. If we do the partial derivative with respect to, let's do x first. Since it's a quotient, we take the derivative of the top. Treating the y like a constant, the derivative of 6x squared is 12x. And the 6y squared has no x's on it. So it's a constant. It goes to 0 times the bottom, x squared plus y squared, minus the derivative of the bottom with respect to x. So we have 2x. Again, the y squared goes to 0 because there's no x's on it times the top, which is 6x squared minus 6y squared, 
all over the denominator squared, x squared plus y squared squared. And that gives us the partial derivative of f with respect to x. It helps us measure how the function is changing in the x direction. But let's also do the partial with respect to y so we can practice both ways. This function is rather symmetrical between the x's and y, so it's going to look pretty similar. It's a quotient, so we'll take the derivative of the numerator. 6x squared has no y's on it, so that's gone. The derivative of negative 6y squared is negative 12y times the denominator, which is x squared plus y squared, minus the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x squared is 0. The derivative of y squared is 2y times the top, 6x squared minus 6y squared, all over the denominator squared, x squared plus y squared squared. And now we've got the partial derivative of the function with respect to y. So that's all there is to a partial derivative. You treat the other variable like it's a constant and take our derivatives like normal. We can actually do second and third derivatives as well. We can do higher derivatives. And to do that, we're going to first familiarize ourselves with the notation. And then we will do a couple examples. So first, you might see f sub xx. That means we take the derivative with respect to x. Then the second derivative is also with respect to x. If we have f of xy, that means we're taking the derivative with respect to x first. Then the second derivative is with respect to y. As you might expect, f sub yx means we're taking the derivative with respect to y, then with respect to x. And finally, you might see f sub yy. That means we're taking the derivative with respect to y first, and then again with respect to y the second time. So there's four different ways we can calculate a second derivative. And you could imagine there'd be even more if we were doing third derivatives, all the combinations. So with that notation in mind, let's take a look at a couple examples where we're asked to find higher derivatives. And we're going to start with f of xy equals negative 5x e to the y. First, we're going to find the partial derivative with respect to x. This is just the first derivative with respect to x. This is just like we did prior. So we treat everything with a y like it's a constant. So e to the y is a constant. The 5 is a constant. The derivative of x is 1, so we're just left with negative 5 e to the y. Now from there, if I want to find f sub xx, we take a look at this function 5 e to the y and take the derivative with respect to x. But the, there is no x in here, so this is just a constant. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So let's try one that might have been more interesting. Instead of f sub xx, let's do fxy, the partial derivative with respect to x first. That's been done in blue. And now we'll take the derivative of that with respect to y. Negative 5 is a constant, and the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. And so that becomes our second derivative, second partial derivative with respect to x, and then with respect to y. We could have done the partial derivative with respect to y first as well if we were interested in that value. Going back to the original function now, the partial derivative with respect to y 
treats the e to the y as the function we're interested in. Its derivative is e to the y times the constant of negative 5x. Now we can calculate f sub yy, or the partial derivative with respect to y and then y again, the second partial derivative. Again, the derivative of e to the y is e to the y in the constant of negative 5x tags along. We could also calculate the partial derivative with respect to y followed by x. So going back up to the purple, we start with the partial derivative with respect to y, and then we take the derivative of this function with respect to x. The derivative of the x is 1, and all that's left then is the negative 5 and the e to the y. And something that's interesting that you might note is the partial derivative with respect to x then y gave us the same answer as the partial derivative with respect to y then x. That's not an accident. That will continue to happen. And to illustrate it, let's do one more example. Let's take a look at f of x, y equal e to the x cubed, y to the fourth. This one's going to be really interesting how it works out. Let's first start by taking the partial derivative with respect to x, and then we'll jump over and do the partial derivative with respect to y. Then we'll go back and do the four second order partial derivatives. So first, with respect to x, treating the x like the variable, the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff, x cubed y to the fourth, times the derivative of the inside x cubed is the variable we're using. So we have 3x squared, keeping the y to the fourth as a constant. When we do the partial derivative with respect to y, the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff, this time with respect to y. So that's going to be 4y cubed, keeping the x cubed as a constant. Now let's go back and see if we can find the four partial derivatives. First, the xx partial derivative. As you look at the partial derivative with respect to x, you notice we have a product. Both parts multiplied together have the variable x. That makes it a product rule. So we take the derivative of the first with respect to x, that's 6xy to the fourth, times the second, e to the x cubed y to the fourth, plus the derivative of the second, which is e to the x cubed y to the fourth, times the derivative of the stuff, 3x squared y to the fourth. And we still need to multiply by the first part, which is 3x squared y to the fourth. We can clean up that right side a little bit. So for our final answer, we have 6xy to the fourth, e to the x cubed y to the fourth, plus 3 times 3 is 9. x squared, x squared is x to the fourth. y to the fourth, y to the fourth is y to the eighth. e to the x cubed, y to the fourth. Let's try another one. Let's do the f sub x, y. It still is a product because there still is y's in both things multiplied together. So using the product rule, we take the derivative of the first with respect to y. 3 times 4 is 12y cubed, keeping the x squared as a constant, times the first, e to the x cubed, y to the fourth, plus the derivative of the second, e to the stuff is e to the stuff, x cubed, y to the fourth, times the derivative of the stuff. The derivative of y cubed is 4. I'm sorry, the derivative of y to the fourth is 4y cubed with the x cubed treated as a constant. But we still need to multiply by the first factor of 3x squared y to the fourth. So putting that together, we get 12x squared y cubed e to the x cubed y to the fourth plus 4 times 3 is 12. 
we've got a total of x to the fifth, y to the seventh, e to the x cubed, y to the fourth. Let's find the other two partial derivatives as well. We've already found the partial with respect to y. Let's do the partial with respect to y twice. Again, in a very similar way, you see we've got y's in both parts that are multiplied together. So we use the product rule. The derivative of the first with respect to y, 4 times 3 is 12, y squared, keeping the x cubed as a constant, times the second, e to the x cubed, y to the fourth, plus the derivative of the second part is e to the x cubed, y to the fourth, times the derivative of the stuff. In the exponent, we're taking the derivative of y to the fourth, which is 4y cubed, keeping the x cubed as a constant. And don't forget to multiply by the first part, the 4x cubed, y cubed. So cleaning that up, 12x cubed y squared, e to the x squared y to the fourth, plus 4 times 4 is 16. We've got a total of x to the sixth, y to the sixth, e to the x cubed, y to the fourth. The other one we haven't found is fyx. In theory, this should come out exactly the same as the red answer because switching the order we hinted at in the previous example, we didn't really prove it, that they are going to be the same result. Let's see if that works. It'll be a good check on our work. It still is a product rule because there still are x's in both parts. So taking the derivative with respect to x, 4 times 3 is 12. x squared y cubed is our constant times the second, which is e to the x cubed y to the fourth plus the derivative of the second part. The derivative of the second part is e to the stuff, so e to the x cubed y to the fourth times the derivative of the stuff with respect to x. So that's going to be 3x squared with the y to the fourth now treated as a constant times the first part, which is 4x cubed y cubed. So for our final answer, when we combine it together, 12x squared y cubed e to the x cubed y to the fourth plus 3 times 4 is 12. Adding our exponents, x to the fifth, y to the seventh, e to the x cubed y to the fourth. And again, you notice we got the same answer both times, so I'm feeling pretty good about that answer. Partial derivatives are straightforward in that we're just treating the other variable as a constant. However, working with that philosophy can prove a little challenging as you get used to it. So practice is very important. Take the time to look at the homework assignment, practice some of these, come to class with questions, and I'll see you in class where we'll look at more of these and some applications.